folks, this is Pastor Mike Hawkard coming to you from Watchman Studios with a special series of the Watchman video broadcast. We are reporting from uh, this year's MUFON Symposium 2023. The background you see behind me is from the convention hall. It was a beautiful place there in Covington, Kentucky slash Cincinnati, Ohio. We spent uh, four days there, actually, three days, four days, setting up our table uh, in, the, um, in the display room where all the other people have, they're selling books and they're selling t-shirts and they're selling weird stuff. I have no idea what it's for. I didn't even want to ask. But anyway, we were there with our crew giving out DVDs, a whole, whole bundle of them. I think about seven DVDs in a bundle. We had them all taped together. My special thanks to Will and Olivia for their tremendous help. And of course, my wife, Sweetie Pie, who I guarantee you 40 years ago, never pictured herself even attending a UFO conference, much less working a UFO, uh, a UFO convention. But because of her husband and because of my mind and the inquisitive nature that I have and the fact that there are things flying around in the atmosphere and I want to know what those things are. And there is absolutely no better place to find the answers to those questions than from right here in the Word of God. I want to start out. Uh, this is on my heart right now. And, was, and these verses are going to pop up again as I present to you the things that I learned uh, from this year's, let me explain, MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. Now, I don't know when exactly that started, but um, what MUFON does is it has uh, chapters set up in every state of the union. Um, I think their headquarters is in Cincinnati, Ohio, if I'm, if I'm right on that. And uh, what they do is they, um, they research UFO sightings. If someone uh, calls in or sends an email or submits some form of UFO sighting or UFO encounter to MUFON, then whatever state director is in charge of that area, they'll decide on what to do with it. Number one, are, there, are we going to post it? Uh, number two, should we investigate it? Uh, are there pictures of this? Are, is there video of this? Everybody's carrying phones around. And so, listen, there is way more visual evidence of unknown flying objects in the sky than there ever was. And I, I would say that just this year alone, 2023, and we're not even done with the year, I would say that more video will end up being taken of UFOs, legitimate, unidentified flying objects. More video will be taken this year than all the film and pictures from the, all the years going back, let's say, to 1947 when Kenneth Arnold first saw uh, what he described as plan form shape objects. And the only reason why the news media ended up calling them flying saucers was he described their movement going about 3,000, 4,000 miles an hour as like a plate, a spinning plate skipping across the top of the water. That's how he described it. And so the news media said, oh, flying saucers. I guess they were trying to make fun of him. But anyway, I would say that since 1947, up until the time of mobile phones with good, decent video capabilities on them. I'd say more video is going, to, is going to be taken this year than in all the years combined of film and pictures and so on of UFOs. This is a time right now that you and I are living in where the evidence is becoming more and more overwhelming. And if, if it troubles you as a Christian to believe in these things or to uh, you know, look into them or whatever. I'm here to tell you, uh, I've tried to produce the videos, give out the teaching to show pastors, to show church members, 
these things, they're going to increase in the sightings and people are going to be asking us as Bible believing Christians, what do you think those things are? And it's a shame if we can't give them an answer because that's what we're here for. We're here to give an answer to every man who asked of the faith that we have, the beliefs that we have, the salvation that we believe in and so on. And I would say yes. This subject, UFOs, I wouldn't say that if you don't believe in it the way I do, then you're not saved. I wouldn't say that at all. But there is a salvation issue that goes along with this. Let me, let me read to you the, the verse that I have in my heart. It's in Galatians, uh, the first chapter. Uh, Paul starts right out going after the Galatian churches because they dropped the ball. Paul taught the, the plain, true gospel to them that salvation is by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And he, Paul even says, so foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. And he said in, in Galatians 3, 2, this only what I learn of you, received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And that's the, that's the core of what Bible Christianity is all about. But look at what Paul said was going to happen because of the gospel that he preached. There was going to be some people who would try to subvert it. Look at what he says in Galatians 1, 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So there is, I would say, not just one other gospel. There's thousands of them. No matter what religion you have, if your religion requires an action on your part, if it requires works, if it, if it requires strict obedience, if it requires money, if it requires, uh, as my pastor friend, Pastor Reg Kelly said, there's two religions in the world, do and done. And it took me a second, but I went, ours is done. When Christ said, it is finished. The work of our salvation, the work of our redemption has already been performed by Jesus Christ. No work on our part, but I guarantee you any other gospel, I'll tell you how easy it is to recognize it. Just ask yourself or ask whoever's trying to teach it to you, is there a work involved here? Is there an obedience that I have to have? Do I, do I have to go to church only on Saturday? Do I have to wear a certain kind of clothing? Can I only eat in certain types of food and so on? All of these are covered in the New Testament. And the Bible makes it clear that the work of our salvation is already accomplished by Jesus Christ. We simply put our faith and our trust not in ourselves, especially not in me. I'll fail every time, but Christ won't. So he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. The, the word gospel means good tidings, glad tidings, good news, if you would. And he says, it's not good news. It's not a glad tiding. It's not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Those that trouble you are the ones who are telling you, well, you're obviously not saved because you don't look like us and you don't act like us and you don't go to church when we go to church and you have this and you have that. They would trouble you and make you think that you're not saved because you don't do the things that they boast about doing. So he says in verse 8, here it is right here. But though we or an angel from heaven. Now your mind may have this beautiful, hallelujah, angel coming down from heaven, you know, with wings and a white robe and a big halo over its head. And, but there's different types of beings that are in the angelic realm. Any spirit, any spirit, whether they be good spirits or bad spirits, evil spirits, devils, gods with a little g, no matter what the Bible calls them, no matter what man calls them, they are angels from the heavenly realm. And I think Paul is telling us here what to expect. 
the we or an angel from heaven bring, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And I can tell you, this is my third year now going to the MUFON Symposium. The first year, I believe God laid it. I don't know how in the world I saw this website come up uh, in my feed, or maybe I saw it, I don't know, maybe I saw it on Instagram or something, like, but a MUFON Symposium. And I started thinking and praying about it. Should I go there? Should I go there? God, do you want me to go there and give out DVDs? Never the thought of going out there and selling DVDs to cover our costs. Just, God, do you want me to go out there and give out DVDs? And so I laid a fleece out before the Lord, and uh, the fleece was in the form of, would they let somebody from a Baptist church be part of their uh, symposium? In other words, would they let me have a table uh, in, in, as part of their conference, in their conference room, to give out our DVD. So I filled out the application, told them exactly what we were going to do, told them who we were, and told them that we weren't going to sell anything. We were going to give out DVDs that dealt with the UFO issue, sent the money in, sent the application in, and I just said, God, if they turn it down, then that's you're, you telling me not to go. If they accept it, we're going. Lo and behold, got the email back probably in a couple weeks and said, congratulations. And I went, praise the Lord. Boy, I need some help. Do I know somebody that lives in Lost Wages, Nevada? And sure enough, we've got followers out there, and uh, they've been helping us every year. So this is our third year. And I can tell you that every year, there's always somebody there who comes by our table. And it just seems like they have, it just seems like they're being led to attack the gospel of Jesus Christ. I remember last year when it was in Denver, Colorado, there was a man there who said that he had been a pastor. And it was almost like to hear him talk, it was almost like he had graduated from Christianity. He moved past that years ago. Yeah, I was, I was a Christian once. I was even a pastor, pastor to church. And as I began to give him scriptures of things that he was sort of arguing about, he would say, I know the scriptures. I know those verses you're talking about. It has no effect on me. He, he was inoculated against Bible verses. And it was obvious to me that no scripture was going to have any impact on his thinking. See, he had moved on. He now believed in multiple gods, and he believed in higher realms of existence. And I think he believed, even though he didn't want to say it, I think he believed that one of these days, he, along with a lot of other people who attend MUFON, they were going to become gods one of these days, and the UFO people are coming here to elevate man to that status. Listen, that, my friends, is the definition of another gospel. You see, because the true gospel of Christ, what does it do for us? Does it elevate the flesh? No, it crucifies the flesh kills the flesh, mortify the deeds of the, of the body, uh, take up your cross daily and follow Christ. And our cross basically is this flesh that we have, and it needs to be crucified and set so that we can be set free from it and live forever. Like Paul said in Romans chapter 7, that we as people, as humans, we're under the law so long as we live. But if we die... We're no longer, our soul is no longer under the law, okay? We're free to be with Jesus now for all of eternity. And so absolutely, every year at MUFON, there's people there who are trying to spread the idea of another gospel being brought by, here, here's what we'll do, aliens equals angels, okay? But, but not, not like Michael and Gabriel, the good angels, not those guys. Not the two angels that accompanied uh, the Lord when he visited Abraham and then they went on to tell Lot, you got to get out of town, Lot, tomorrow morning we're going to blow this place up. Not like those angels, okay? Uh, but that, those evil angels, that's what aliens are. 
They're gods with a little g, devils, evil spirits, unclean spirits, familiar spirits. That's what they are. And they are bringing to this world and spreading now, not just the, the kooks and the people that go to MUFON, I'm one of them, but now it's, they're making themselves manifest in the sky. People who never, never thought of ever seeing a UFO in their life, now they're seeing them. Now they're recording them. And now they don't have answers. And the only answers that can be supplied them are the people like at MUFON or worse than that, which I won't bother with that. And so the gospel of these aliens is being spread. And it is accursed. And God has asked me, I believe, to go to these people. Are these people not, are they not in need of salvation? Are the thousands of people who follow UFOs and research them and do their own study and belong to organizations and write memoirs and books and blogs about how their contact with aliens and UFOs came about, are these people any less deserving of hearing the truth of the gospel than anybody else is? No, they need to hear the gospel. And I can tell you, this being my third year there, okay, people heard the gospel. And it's always funny to me how every year there's always one or two or several people who claim to have new revelations about the Bible. One guy this past year uh, was trying to tell me about some new manuscripts that had been dug up somewhere. Now, I honestly have not heard of this. But new manuscripts relating to Moses and, and Egypt and Israel in the wilderness and so on. And I'm just going, no, I haven't heard of this. He said, well, they just kind of, it, these, these new documents show that uh, the, the Bible guys got it all wrong. And uh, there was actually a whole nother list of commandments that God gave to Moses. And, uh, and, so, and I love it how these people who almost never read a Bible know this much about it. They know the name Moses, they've heard of Jesus, and they know that Ezekiel saw a wheel and they think it was a UFO. These people like to tell us Christians what we're right and wrong about. I just love it when they show up. And you know, they can, they can spread their manure wherever they go and people go, oh wow, I know I haven't heard that. Man, I'm gonna look into that. Where is that found? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna look at that website. Boy, that sounds interesting. They're like the Athenians that is mentioned in the book of Acts. They're always looking after some new thing. But when they run into somebody like me, and I'm not mean at all, and they say, did you know that they found new manuscripts that, that prove that, you know, the, the manuscripts the Bible is based on is an error and that Moses really was this and there was, new, there was a whole list of different commandments than one we have in the Bible. And, and I say, uh, no, I haven't heard that, but it doesn't alter my faith. I believe that God inspired every word in this. But well, you know, the Bible was, you know, it's been proven now. The Bible's written by men, and then and, and those and manuscripts were faulty, and now we have new manuscripts. And, and I'm going, no, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's, the Bible says that holy men of God spake as ever. And as I quote scripture to these people, you can see them getting a little bit upset. And after a while, they go, well, I guess we'll just have to say that's what you believe and this is what I believe. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. And they walk off, okay? And I'm not trying to be, I don't go there and grab people as they walk by and say, what do you believe about the Bible? Well, you're wrong. You're an idiot. I don't do that, okay? Uh, in fact, I usually let, bless her heart, Olivia do most of the giving out of the DVDs. Man, that is her spiritual gift. But I don't like to debate people. I don't like to get into it with them. If they ask me simple questions or they ask me complicated questions about the Bible, I'll give them the, the best that I can in a loving way. But nine times out of 10, they're not going to accept it. But I'm gonna try anyway. So anyway, back, back to this. Uh, he said, I, um, 
Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And so I think, I think that that is exactly what's going to happen. I think an angelic entity, a bad one, is going to come and reveal to this world a secret gospel that has been hidden from all mankind and all religions, and it is going to have the impact of changing every religion in the world. You see, um, one of the things that I've seen over and over and over again in the UFO videos and the, um, the books that I've read and so on is that, boy, when the government finally comes out and discloses all they have on UFOs, why, that's going to change. I mean, there'll be rioting in the streets and the stock market's going to collapse and people are going to jump out of buildings and, and suicide cults are going to pop up because all the religions in the world will be proven wrong. And I'm going, you know, the way I read the Bible, it won't affect my belief. In, in fact, it'll bolster what it is that I believe. Because I believe that that's the exact, or at least part of the setup that's coming. The strong delusion where people are going to believe a lie. And it's because they rejected and they, the, the word of truth and they didn't have a love for the truth. They didn't want the truth anyway. So there's going to be a strong delusion coming. An angel is going to come and, and get, deliver another gospel. And they're going to fall for it. And they're going to say, well, our old religion is just collapsed now. Islam and Judaism and Christianity and Hinduism. And, uh, now, there are some religions, I'll tell you, that are, man, they're looking for the aliens to come. One of them I can think of, I'll get to that as we move along. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So, on the first day, um, basically it's a setup day. We go and uh, we carry in all the DVDs and we put our banner in front of our table and we, we set up the DVDs. My wife and, and Olivia, they do such a wonderful job there. Uh, I'd make a mess of it, so I'd just leave them alone let them do it. And, um, but anyway, we, they set, everybody's setting up their tables and people are hoping to make some good sales and... People are hoping to, uh, you know, to get across their idea and so on. This year, uh, I found it very, uh, rather interesting that the MUFON organization itself um, had a book fair. And uh, they, had, they had, I don't know where they got them from, but these old books on UFOs, some that I had read when I was a, a child growing up in school. Some I recognized them. Some I had read since I, I've been an adult. Uh, they had multiple copies of them, these old paperback books on UFOs. And uh, so I picked up uh, about two or three of them that looked pretty interesting to me. I'll be sharing that uh, a little bit later as we go on. Uh, but anyway, that first day is there. And what you have primarily there are the speakers that will be speaking at MUFON. And you'll have the other vendors um, that are uh, hoping to sell things or distribute things or whatever. They're kind of looking around. There are some people coming in off the street uh, who have bought tickets, and they can go and look around and look at all the different things. And so Friday was not quite as busy as the next day was, but it was busy enough, and we were giving out DVDs. And we had uh, a lady that came by, and I'm sitting by the table, and a lady came by, and she began to talk to me um, because I think Olivia or my wife or uh, somebody had mentioned who I was, that I was a, a Baptist pastor and that I had different uh, DVDs on UFOs and aliens and paranormal things and so on. And so she was uh, interested in talking with me and sort of hearing what it was that I believed. And when I asked her uh, what her belief was, she said, I'm a Unitarian. Now, let me explain what Unitarian is. It basically, they have the word unity in it. And basically, a Unitarian believes that all the religions are valid. All of the religions are true. That there are elements of every religion in the world 
that if you take all of these unique things from every religion, you, you've seen the, the bumper stickers on the uh, back of people's cars that have Unitarian uh, ideas. They, they feature, they'll say things like peace or whatever, and they'll have uh, emblems and logos from all these different religions making up the letters of whatever word, there's different ones, whatever word they're trying to spell out. Obviously, these people believe that there, are, there is one God, but he has many different faces and many different names and many different doctrines and, of course, many different ways that we can reach a higher plateau or a higher level or elevate ourselves or become gods or live forever or uh, live on other planets with the happy alien people, okay? And so I, I just, I, when she said Unitarian, I said, that's interesting. I said, because um, last year at, at the MUFON Symposium, when it was in Colorado, I heard Kathleen Martin. And she said, yeah, I know who she is. Kathleen Martin is uh, Betty and Barney Hill's niece. It's Betty Hill's niece. And Betty and Barney Hill have now deceased. They're, they've died. And uh, Miss Martin is the niece of Betty Hill, and she goes around telling about all the encounters that she's had with aliens and UFOs and talking about her aunt, famous aunt and uncle. Betty and Barney Hill, one of the first couples in the United States to ever come forward with this idea that they had been abducted and taken up into a UFO. Uh, now, it's a typical abduction scenario. They were traveling, traveling one night, uh, all of a sudden they see lights in the sky, they pull over to take a look at it, and they look at it for a while, and then next thing they know, they, they're turning the car back on and pulling back on the road and headed home. And then they realize they had about three hours missing out of their time span. They're wondering, what happened to these three hours? Later on, they went to see a psychiatrist, a hyp uh, hypnotist, they began to do regressions. In other words, uh, they would, somebody would hypnotize them and take them back to that time where they uh, had the missing memories. And they recount how they were taken up, invited into, uh, or led into a, uh, a, a flying saucer type ship or something like that, and different tests done on them. Um, there was a movie made. This is really what got me going with UFOs and aliens back when I was a, a young boy. This is in the, like, I think the early 70s that they made a movie called A UFO Incident. And uh, believe it or not, um, the guy who plays Darth Vader's voice, James Earl Jones, is the man who played Barney Hill. They were a, a biracial couple, uh, which in itself was, you know, not too common back in the 60s. Uh, but anyway, uh, I watched this movie and was fascinated by this and believed it. I talked with Miss Martin last year at MUFON and asked her, because she had said in, I think, a speech she gave about UFOs and her famous aunt and uncle that he was a Christian. And so I asked her after she gave her talk at MUFON last year uh, what denomination he was, and she said he was a Unitarian. Now, and I didn't say anything to her, but instantly in my mind I'm going, well, that makes sense. Generally because I am firm in my belief that true, born-again, Bible-believing Christians, if Jesus told us in Matthew 24 that it, it is possible to deceive the very elect, then I would believe exactly that. But Jesus said, if it were possible to deceive the very elect, meaning it's not possible God will not let those who are truly born again. Now, I'm not the one judging this. This is God, okay? God is the one who is saying, you're born again, you're not. Now, I understand that some people may have had an experience similar to this, and then, because of that experience, look and seek out true Bible Christianity um, as a protection from that ever happening again, because I believe that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But anyway, um, 
knowing that Barney Hill was a Unitarian, basically, it basically means that he accepts all faiths as being genuine and that there's validity to all of them. And so the only thing that I said to this woman, and we're having just a very cordial conversation, is I said, well, that all doesn't work, though, does it? Because if you really get down to it, all religions contradict each other. Well, this trip to trigger in this woman, she's an older, older than me, older woman, and she just very smugly and snidely said, well, we should all love one another like because I said not all religions agree that I hate everybody who's not in my religion. I never said that. I never once gave off that impression either. But that was her immediate. She got out her shield board against the gospel and deflected it and said, you're supposed to love everybody and you don't. Sort of like that. Okay, and so she encouraged me then to watch the testimony of a man, a Unitarian minister who had been abducted. Now, there's something I want to insert in here. I've noticed in the last few years, and especially going to MUFON now, this is our third year, the language is, you know how language changes with uh, popularity, okay? And uh, I noticed in the last several years that whereas people who had been abducted by unidentified flying objects, taken out of their bed at night, disappearing from all human contact, taken aboard a ship, bizarre things done to them, painful things done to them, grotesque things done to them, wicked things done to them, and then them returned back into their room against their will, mind you. Whereas those people used to be called abductees, or they had been abducted, now the wording has changed to soften in favor of the ETs, in favor of the, what, what do we say they were? Aliens equals angels. In favor of the angels, in favor of the aliens. So they're not abductees anymore, they're experiencers. They've softened it so much, they want, you to, they want people to think that this was all a positive thing that happened to them. And wait till you hear what uh, David Politis said to me. Okay, that's coming up. It really, it really rubbed me the wrong way. But anyway, so he is... Uh, an experiencer, which basically means he was stolen out of his home, his bedroom, his bed or whatever, taken against his will, things done to him, put back in his bed, his memory so-called erased so that he doesn't remember anything and so he doesn't get angry at whoever took him, but now he's an experiencer. The Reverend Michael J. Carter, she encouraged me to watch his video, so I did. I went to his YouTube site and watched his video. Um, he says that in January 2017 that he had a blood clot uh, in his right leg, and it was pretty bad. Uh, and he tried, now get this, now this, this is typical of people who practice occult things for medicine. Believing that the body has hidden energies that will heal all diseases and they, those energies must be released. We must release them before they can do their... People don't fall for that. Where is it in your Bible that you read that your body has healing energies that are trapped and that you need to go to a vegan diet or you need to put needles all in your skin or you need to go and whatever by, by whoever violated and touched in all kinds of things by some wacko, or you need to buy uh, Mike Adams stuff off his website in order to release those energies. People, that's not true. It's not biblical. And it basically, it's new age witchcraft medicine is what it is, okay? 
Now, this is not the video where I make friends and influence people, okay? This is the video where I tell the truth, and you have to decide whether you're going to believe what God said or believe what somebody else said, okay? But anyway, he tried Reiki. He was a Reiki practitioner, okay? Which is this idea that you have healing prana, that's Eastern mysticism, prana, the serpent power inside of you that can heal all diseases. He tried it for several days and it didn't work. So on July 4th, 2017, he had an encounter with what he calls a Nordic alien that he called a Pleiadian. Now, what is a Pleiadian? Well, they're from supposedly what we call the Pleiades. It's a group of cluster of seven stars. And actually, those seven stars, the Pleiades, are mentioned three times in our Bibles. First of all is Job chapter 9, verse 1. Then Job answered and said, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, and who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered, which removeth the mountains, and they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place. That's a powerful God we have. And the pillars thereof tremble which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not. God knows how to do that. God knows how to make it stand still in the sky, doesn't he? And sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. Now look at verse 9. Which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. Now, we have the mentioning of, of four different constellations. Arcturus, which is um, the bear, Arctic. Uh, Orion, which is the, the mighty hunter. Uh, that's, that's about the only one plus the little dipper, the big dipper that I can recognize. Okay? I know Orion in the wintertime and big dipper in the summertime. That's it. Um, the Pleiades, which sometimes I can find. That's this cluster of seven stars and the chambers of the south. Now he mentions one, two, three, four. Now in Bible numerics, not numerology, numerics, God's laid out a pattern for this number four and what it means. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Um, go look at other videos that I've done on the number four the fourth dimension, the spiritual dimension. You can call it the spirit realm. And that's exactly what it is because we know, according to the Bible, that every star up in the heaven is an angel. Now, we can only see a small portion of that angel. But believe what God said. It's an angel. And notice that we have the mentioning of one, two, three, four constellations. God is showing us by this pattern that we're referring not just to these little bright objects in the sky, but we're referring to the angels that they represent as well, being in that fourth dimension or being in that spiritual realm. Let's look at the other mention, Job 38. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? Now, let's stop right here. Notice that the Bible is saying that the Pleiades have an influence. Think about it. Now, if these are just lights in the sky that are 12 billion light years away, I don't know how far away they are. If those are just lights in the sky that are 100 million light years away, then what influence would they have on anything on this earth? But what if they're more than that? What if they're exactly what God says they are? Angels. Could you bind or stop the influences of the Pleiades, the seven stars? 
Could you stop whatever it was they were trying to do? Could you do that? No. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? The bands of Orion are the three stars in his belt. That's Orion's belt. The first Men in Black movie was all about that. Okay? You might go back and watch that. But anyway, loose the bands of Orion. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season, which is a, a Hebrew term that we believe is related to uh, the 12 months of the year and how that every month there is a different constellation. Now, I don't believe that the naming of the constellations, the way we accept them now, like Virgo and the lion and Taurus, the bull and all that stuff, that there's some secret gospel message in those. I don't believe that because the Bible doesn't teach it. Okay, That's why I don't believe it. But what I do believe is that can you, uh, canst thou guide, uh, canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Can you bring around the next month of stars in their season? Can you do that? No. Can you wish upon them and wish that they would show up and they show up? No. Only God can do that. Uh, canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Now we have, again, we have Pleiades, Bands of Orion, the Maseroth, and Maseroth and Arcturus. Again, four. Okay? So let's take this now back to what uh, this Reverend Carter said. He said that he had an encounter with a Nordic angel from the Pleiades. He didn't say which star. There's seven plus stars in the Pleiades. He didn't say which one. According to the Bible and what the Bible is trying to tell us, he's dealing with spirits from a spiritual realm. Angels. In this case, they would be lying angels. They would be devils. But they would be devils, or let's say they are spirits of a familiar kind. They're posing as a certain type of angel or a certain type. Remember what angel and alien mean? They mean the same thing. They're posing as a certain type of alien or angel or spiritual being. They're, therefore, they are familiar spirits. And this is who healed him, was a familiar spirit. Uh, let me finish with this. Verse 33, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? The answer to that is no, no, no. We have one more mention of the Pleiades, although it's not mentioned as the Pleiades. They're called the seven stars. And mythology refers to them as the seven sisters. Okay? Greek mythology, seven sisters, Native American, um, I wouldn't call it theology, but Native American spiritual beliefs refer to them as seven sisters. In fact, there's a story about those seven sisters, that those seven sisters were seven Cherokee or Kiowa or I guess whatever tribe you belong to, but those seven sisters were out playing one day and a great big grizzly bear came after them. And they started running. And they ran and ran and ran and ran. And finally, they jumped on top of this rock. And they called for the great spirit to help them. And the great spirit lifted up the rock just as that big grizzly bear was going to attack them. And he hit the side of the rock as it's being pulled up out of the earth. And he slid down. And you could see his claw marks on the side of this mountain that the great spirit made. You know what it is? Devil's Tower. The whole thrust of the movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Amos 5.8, Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Now, what you have in all three of these verses, whether you agree with anything I said about them or not, what you have in these three verses is the fact that God 
is so powerful and so mighty that he can turn the stars at his will. He can make the seasons appear. He can stop the sun. He can start the sun. He can make the constellations stand still. He can make the constellations move. Nobody else, no other God, no other angel can do what our God can do. Amen? Amen. Now, let's get back to this thing where he believes that it was what he calls a Nordic alien. What, what is it? Because he has a Nordic track and he, no. Um, I, did a, I did a Watchman video on this when I was dealing with the various types of an, angelic slash alien beings that people were seeing. The, dra the draconians, which are dragons. Those are the dragons of the Bible, the serpents. Um, you have the, uh, the Nordic ones. They are blonde-haired, fair-skinned, blue-eyed, sort of angelic looking. They, they look, they're called Nordic because they look like they come from Denmark, Sweden, Norway, place in Finland, places like that. They come from the uh, Scandinavian nations of the north. Okay? And so here is a picture of, he had somebody sculpt this for him. He saw this eight foot tall, bright skinned, blonde haired, blue eyed alien with a mantle on. You know what a mantle is. It's like a, 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 a coat, an overcoat, a trench coat or something like that with a big, big hood on it that comes down over. Now, does that, does that sound familiar to anybody? Think of a, a God, a spirit that appeared and had a mantle on. It was the familiar spirit that Endora, the witch at Endor, the woman who had a familiar spirit, it is what she conjured up who posed and pretended to be Samuel. 1 Samuel 28, 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. Notice the picture I have next to here. That is from a tarot card. It's called the hermit. The hermit represents this age-old wisdom, secret, occult wisdom, that can only be found and discerned by means of occult practices. Um, familiar spirits and so on. Notice the star inside of his lantern. If you take a look at it, it's actually what people call the Star of David or the star on the Jewish flag. It's a triangle pointing up and a triangle pointing down and they're interwoven amongst each other. It basically shows the sons of God and the daughters of men joining together. That's what this represents. He is covered with the mantle, and Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Now, he perceived it was Samuel, but we know from the Bible that it wasn't Samuel. We know that it was a familiar spirit. So I want you to get this now, the, the typology of it. We're told by the Apostle Paul in, um, in 2 Corinthians 11 to, to watch out for another spirit, another gospel, and another Jesus. John mentioned the Antichrist, another Christ. So we are to expect showing forth, manifesting here on this earth, a God, a deity, a spirit, who is going to show himself that he is Jesus, but he's not Jesus. He is another Jesus, just as 
that spirit with the mantle on was another Samuel. You see it now? So what we have going on, Saul represents all of the people who, boy, this is MUFON every year, all the people who at one time may have believed somewhat in Christianity, may have believed somewhat in the Bible, may have went to church for a while, may have even served in the church for a while. Maybe some of them were preachers. I ran in, well, I didn't run into somebody, but I ran into somebody who was married to somebody who did that. All of these people who sample Christianity for a while, and then they fall away. And then they become whatever else is left out there. That's who Saul represents. Because if you look at the beginning of Saul, the Bible says he was a goodly young man. He was good. And when Samuel anointed him, he's preaching the God. He's prophesying with the prophet. Is, not Saul, is Saul among the prophets? That's what they were saying. But how did the end of his life turn out? He rejects God's word, and Samuel tells him, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, God has rejected thee from being king. He rejects God's word, and Samuel tells him, from this point forward, God's not going to forgive any of your sins. So now he's reprobate, and he lives his life, and what does it do to him? Anytime he sees David, what's he want to do to him? He wants to kill him. Okay? That's what happens to these people once they reject the gospel. And people, I'm setting you up for a story that I'm going to tell you about a pastor's wife. I'm not going to call her by name. I'm not going to tell you what book she wrote. But she did exactly these things. She sampled Christianity and then moved because she had an experience with a familiar spirit. That familiar spirit caused her to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ, reject the word of God. And so now, anytime a, a real Christian shows up, anytime somebody who loves the Lord shows up, anytime someone who says, you know, man, why don't you, why don't you come back to the gospel? Why don't you come back to the Bible? All they want to do is throw a javelin through you. Okay? That's exactly what's coming to this world as people. And this is what I've noticed. As America has turned more and more away from the Word of God, America has turned more and more and more over toward these spirits. Here's, here is uh, Travis Walton. If you remember him, I've talked about him. He was abducted for like five days, and he had three of these Nordic aliens that they led him to a place in the ship. They put something over his face. He passed out. He wakes up. He's laying face down in the middle of a road. He looks up. He knows where he is. He'd been missing for five days. Everybody was looking for him. This happened back in the 70s. But he said those aliens that were on that ship, he thought they were humans. He thought, oh, good. Somebody here that's a human I can talk to. They weren't human. They were Nordic aliens. Now, the word Nordic, what does that conjure up in your mind? They're from the north. I want you to read these verses with me. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 14. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. Look in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 22, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. Now, stop and ask yourself the question, who lives at the North Pole? And I don't mean Santa Claus, okay? The answer is nobody. What landmass, what continent is at the North Pole? And if you say Antarctica, you're 
you're off by 180 degrees. Okay, Antarctica is at the bottom of the Earth, the South Pole. There is no landmass, no continent at the North Pole. So there's no nation up there, there's no people that lives up there, and there's no land up there. But why does God keep referring to the kingdoms of the North and a people is coming from the North country? Here is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 3. For out of the North there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. I want you to notice next to that. There is, oh yeah, that's a swastika. The date of 1919. And on the bottom, you have Thule Gesellschaft. Now pardon my German. Thule the actual, the actual phrase is Ultima Thule. Thule is referencing a mythical country or a mythical place at the North Pole where it is rumored and believed by some that a, a, uh, a, a people live up there, a nation. They live up there. They have uh, access to the inner parts of the earth. And so you may have heard of hollow earth theory. Well, that is part of it. The truth of it is the Thule, ultimate Thule, that they refer to being in the north is not actually at the North Pole itself. It's higher up than that. It is the place shown to us in the Bible where God comes from when he visits this earth. Ezekiel, now we're going to bring Ezekiel 1 in. This is the UFOs, UFO lovers' favorite and only part of the Bible that they will ever know anything about. And most people won't even read it. They'll just read uh, Eric Von Daniken or other people and say, yeah, he, I believe what he believes about Ezekiel 1. And Eric Von Daniken, he quit believing in God when he read Ezekiel 1. He was, he was in Catholic school, growing up a Catholic, and the priests were trying to tell him, teach him about God, and he should believe in God, and God is all-powerful, and God is almighty, and God is all-knowing, and everything like that. But he reads in Ezekiel 1 that God is riding on a chariot. And he said, if he's God, he doesn't need a chariot. Yeah, you're right, he doesn't need one. But he's got one. In fact, he doesn't just have one. He's got thousands of them. And Ezekiel 1 gives us the description of the chariot that God sits in. Ezekiel 1 verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. A great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Where did God come from? He came from the north. So where, where is God really? He's in the third heaven. He surpasses this heaven, the, the sky above us, and he surpasses the second heaven, which is the universe and all the stars and everything that's in this vast universe. And he sits atop the third heaven, being the most high God. There is nothing nor nobody higher than our God. So, when the Bible is talking about, like in Joel chapter 2, verse 20, when it's talking about an army from the north, well, we either believe that's the Canadians, or we believe that it's the, the Danish people who are going to attack us, or it's the Siberians, take your pick, or... It's from a higher north than this world, being 
that's where God came from. Joel chapter 2, verse 20, But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. And so, yes, I believe, and, and just study in, in a King James, study the north, northern, all the references in the Bible to the north. And you're going to see that there is an army coming from the north, that there is a people coming from the north, that there are kings in the north. Okay? And since we know, well, think about it. You've seen the, the logo for the United Nations, haven't you? Where is the uh, center point on that logo? You know, they have the world divided into... 32 different sections. The 33rd section is the North Pole. And again, there's no land there. So what could it reference? A higher realm. So I do believe that an invasion is going to take place over all this earth from an army that's coming from the north. And we just happen to have angelic beings called aliens, called Nordic aliens, that look exactly like the kind of German that Adolf Hitler never was, but that he wanted. He believed that the blonde haired, blue eyed race is a superior race to all other mankind and only the blonde haired blue eyed race has the right to rule over the entire world that's what he was doing with all the hitler youth and all the genetic experiments that's what hitler was doing and by the way how many blonde blue eyed jews have you ever seen none so they all had to be killed so that the nordic people can rule over the earth but he got it wrong. He thought it was going to be Nordic German people. No, it's not. It's going to be Nordic angels, evil angels, principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who's going to reign in this fourth kingdom. Now, uh, going back to, um, um, let's see, Dr. Uh, Michael Carter who had this bad blood clot. This is what this lady told me. Um, she said that I should look into a Unitarian minister by the, by the name of Reverend Michael J. Carter and look at his story. So I did. He was uh, abducted. He had this blood clot. He tried his own Reiki magic on it and it had no effect whatsoever. So he has this angel that heals him from this blood clot that he has. Now the question is, can angels heal? Do angels have power over the human body? And the answer is, according to the Bible, yes. And I think most people would agree with me. Job chapter 1. Remember the... The temptation of Job, it was over his body. In verse 9, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has, has not thou made an hedge about him and, and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that, that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So we know then that Satan went out and killed his whole family, killed all his servants, had people steal all of his livestock and everything, turn him into a poor man overnight. And yet Job would not curse God. So the devil comes back. You know the story the next night and says, ah, well, that was easy, you know. But 
Let me make him sick. Let me afflict his body. Let me tear into him. Let me, God says, hold on there, devil. I'll let you afflict his body, but you can't kill him. Job chapter 2, verse 4, Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. We know from what Paul said that the devil, Satan, has the power even over death. And God clearly here is saying, okay, you can afflict his body, but he's going to stay. You better stay alive. So in chapter 2, verse 7, So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all and sat down among the ashes. So the question is, can spirits, can they afflict a body? Yes. Can they heal a body? Well, I believe that they can. I believe that um, in the Catholic Church, and I believe that any of this crazy, charismatic nonsense, that it's quite possible that some people have infirmities that are healed but not by God. They're healed by other spirits. And that, I think, falls into the category of Galatians chapter 1, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. We have an angel that apparently is going to come down from heaven and declare to the world, I can bring you immortality. I can bring you Godhood. Ye all, remember what the devil said to Eve in the Garden of Eden in the temptation? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye shall not surely die. So yeah, I believe that the devil and spirits have the ability. The man that came to me last year, I've given him the pseudonym of Jack Webb because he wants his story to remain anonymous. And he and I, I, I can say that he and I have become friends over this last year. And I love the man. But he said that morning uh, before his UFO experience, that morning, he's get, him and his siblings are gathered around the, uh, the, uh, the stove, the wood stove that they had. And his brother pushed him and he went into that stove and burnt I'm picturing like a big pot belly stove in the middle. It burnt his forearm. He showed me the wound, where it was. And he said, I mean, it hurt him bad. So his mom bandaged it up. That evening, he's sitting as far away from that stove as he can. The kids are watching TV. And he hears the name, his name called out. So he goes out. To the back porch, he looks up. There's this beautiful, blonde, blue-haired, Nordic-looking, angelic woman standing there, beckoning him to come onto the ship, and she healed his arm. I mean, when I looked at his arm, you could see an outline of where something used to be, but it wasn't a burn scar, not in any way. They have the power to heal. And it's going to be Lying signs and wonders is what it's going to be. And it's going to be used to make people fall away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So let me ask you this. 
as we wrap up video number one, is your faith grounded, settled, secured, fast? Are you holding fast? Not just to Christianity as a, as a belief system, but to the Savior himself, Jesus Christ, to his word, the word of God, the holy scriptures that are without error, without any mistake whatsoever. God got everything right in this Bible and he preserved everything in this Bible. So how secure are you in the faith that you say you believe in. Because if I met anybody at MUFON, I met some people who used to believe in Bible Christianity, but don't anymore. I met a man last year. We got into a discussion. It didn't go so well. I didn't budge. He didn't budge. I told him I felt sorry for him. He said, I don't want you feeling sorry for me. I said, well, I do. You walked away from the greatest thing that was ever offered to mankind. Jesus Christ gave his life for your salvation and you walk away from it. Yeah, I said that to him. I want that man to be saved, born again, if it's not too late. So if anything, I run into people there every year that in various forms have walked away from the faith that they once say they believed. So my question to you is, are you still holding on to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you believe that Christ is the one and the only savior for mankind? Not that he's one with all the other alien messiahs, one with Buddha, one with all these other Unitarian type religions. You just believe that Jesus is God and nobody else is man's savior. That Jesus is the most high God and that you believe his word 100% true. It doesn't matter what man says about it. It doesn't matter what other manuscripts man digs up about it. It doesn't matter. This Bible is right 100%. Are you holding fast to this blessed book and looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing? Not of some alien ship somewhere, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that's you. I hope that when we go, I think it's going to be in Texas next year. When we go to Texas with this video, hand it out to hundreds, maybe a thousand people, that somebody who may have been led astray by MUFON or aliens or UFOs or whatever, that by hearing the word of God given in a way that maybe they've never heard before, maybe they didn't know that there was so much in the Bible about UFOs and aliens. Well, I'm here to tell you there is. What I have to give and much more. I'm hoping that some of those people will come to the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And they'll love him the way you and I love him. So pray for our ministry. Pray that these videos reach the people that they need to reach and that some people who have been lied to and led astray all their lives will come to know this wonderful Savior in this wonderful book that you and I call home. This is Pastor Mike. You're the reason why we do what we do. I love you very much, and I hope that you hold fast until the end. God bless you. We'll see you. Part number two of our report from MUFON 2023. God bless you. Bye-bye.